Well, hey guys, I've been seeing a lot of comments from some of you lately that you heard that you don't necessarily need to take a break from using hydroquinone to treat dark spots or melasma. We're gonna explore this topic further in today's video. If you aren't aware, hydroquinone is what we consider the gold standard topical treatment for a variety of diseases of hyperpigmentation in the skin, including post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and melasma. It's considered a gold standard because we have a lot of good research to support it's used for treating these disorders. It works because with hyperpigmentation, you have a cell called the melanocyte. It essentially makes too much pigment, melanin. Melanocytes make pigment by taking tyrosine and converting it to the pigment melanin. They do this using an enzyme called tyrosinase. Hydroquinone reversibly inhibits tyrosinase and it's also melanotoxic. The end result is it inhibits pigment production. Now, when used to treat disorders of hyperpigmentation, it's typically prescribed anywhere from two to 5% strength to be applied to the skin twice a day. Of course, there are higher percentages that can be prescribed. It's often also prescribed in combination with other medications. You can typically see results within five to seven weeks and the treatment is usually considered for three months. And depending on the patient's background skin type, and the skin condition being treated, they may or may not be continued on the topical hydroquinone. There are some reasons around that which we'll get into in today's video. So one of the main concerns around putting hydroquinone on the, on the skin are going to be the side effects that can develop. You can develop side effects with pretty much anything. So what side effects happen with hydroquinone that we need to be concerned with? Irritation from the hydroquinone, and you can also get redness. One issue with hydroquinone, probably as it relates to it being irritating to patients, is that it actually can cause a rebound worsening of hyperpigmentation because what ends up happening is the patient develops irritation and that irritation drives more pigment production. And with time, it's thought that perhaps the hydroquinone, the, the cells, you know, because there's so much irritation, they somehow become maybe even resistant to hydroquinone and it doesn't work as well. If you've ever used hydroquinone to treat hyperpigmentation, especially melasma, you know it can really be beneficial and improve things, but as soon as you stop, it comes right back. I mean, that that is very common. So one thing that we do that helps this not be as likely is a taper. So uh, there are good studies looking at different tapering regimens where you wean the person off of the hydroquinone and that actually can result in a more sustained clearance of the hyperpigmentation. Does it, say, it doesn't mean it won't come back and it unfortunately often does come back. When patients go on a tapering regimen, randomized controlled trials show that it can actually prevent relapses in over 50% of patients. Uh, clinical studies, they don't always reproduce reality. Not all patients are exactly the same. So there's no guarantees that this sort of tapering regimen is going to work for any one person, but uh, that is one approach to reducing the risk of rebound melasma. When we prescribe a topical, we're very well aware of potential adverse risks and we monitor you for those. But where in comes the conversation around taking a pause from hydroquinone, not only as it relates to potentially rebound worsening of hyperpigmentation over time, but also a rare side effect, but worth discussing, known as exogenous ochronosis. What the heck is that? Exogenous ochronosis is a rare side effect of topical hydroquinone in which the patient develops asymptomatic bilateral discoloration. And it's a very distinct appearance of blue, black dots and grayish blue patches. It can happen on the cheeks, the forehead, the sides of the neck, basically anywhere where you have been applying hydroquinone for a long time. This condition, exogenous ochronosis, that blue-black discoloration, it's not hyperpigmentation, it's not melanin, it's ochronotic pigment. This happens because um, a rare side effect of applying hydroquinone to the skin is that it can interfere with certain enzymes, lead to accumulation of these metabolites in the skin that lead to this ochronotic pigment. It's called exogenous ochronosis because it comes about as the result of putting something from the outside on the skin. In contrast, you can have endogenous ochronosis, and that is seen in a rare genetic disease known as 
alcaptonuria. These patients are born with a de deficiency in the enzyme homogentisic acid. They accumulate these ochronotic pigments. Often you can see blue patches in their eyes and blue-black discoloration in their ear. They pee in a cup and leave the cup out at room temperature. Their urine will turn black. While it's rare, I actually have seen a handful of patients with alcaptonuria. Uh, it's more common in the Dominican Republic as well as Slovakia. But I also have seen a handful of cases of exogenous ochronosis from using hydroquinone. But I want to emphasize to you guys that this is a super rare side effect and it's mostly seen in the following conditions. When patients use hydroquinone for a prolonged period of time without taking a break from it and importantly without medical supervision. When hydroquinone is used under medical supervision, this adverse event is almost non-existent. Like when you go to the dermatologist, you're prescribed hydroquinone or triple combination cream, you're followed regularly. This is a non-issue because the dermatologist is evaluating you as you come in and it's not something that we see at all with supervised use of hydroquinone. Where you see it though is people who get a hold of a hydroquinone cream and use it without medical supervision for a prolonged period of time without taking a break from it. It, it also appears to be more likely when you're using very high concentrations of hydroquinone, although it has been reported with 2% hydroquinone. Um, so it can definitely happen with, with lower percentages. Uh, it's also a lot more common when you're using it to a larger surface area and it's more common uh, if you're using it multiple times a day. It's also more common if you have a deeper skin tone. This is something that most of the cases, uh, majority of the cases seem to affect people who have Fitzpatrick phototypes four, five, and six. So deeper skin tones in comparison to paler skin types, although it has also been reported in paler skin types, it's much rarer for those individuals. Now, I mentioned that this side effect is very rare, almost non-existent when hydroquinone is used uh, under doctor supervision. A large study of 20,814 patients looking at 72 different studies, patients using anywhere from two to 5% hydroquinone. The duration of use in the study was anywhere from eight weeks up to two years. In that study, there were no reports of exogenous ochronosis when the patients were using hydroquinone under doctor supervision. A systematic review looking at 789 cases of reported exogenous ochronosis with hydroquinone. Who is developing this? How is it happening, basically? 40 years worth of research. 116 cases were using hydroquinone in the one to 2% range. 22 cases were using 3%. Now, it's important to point out that it's a lot easier for people to come by the one and 2% shrinks as opposed to the 3% shrink. So that might be why this study is somehow suggesting that the 1 and 2% strength is associated with a greater risk of exogenous ochronosis. So keep that in mind. The majority of cases that are happening, the common denominator in cases of exogenous ochronosis is that the patients are doing it without doctor supervision and they're using it for a prolonged period of time without taking a break. Importantly, 35% of cases of exogenous ochronosis are reported in patients who have Fitzpatrick phototype 6. It appears to be a lot more of a risk factor for those of you who have a deeper skin tone. Like I said, personally, I have seen cases of patients who present with exogenous ochronosis, and on further inquiry, they present, oh, hey, yeah, this is what I use. You look at the ingredients, and it's like a, a hydroquinone cream that they have been using multiple times a day to their entire face and neck with no interruptions. Exogenous ochronosis is really disfiguring. It's very difficult to treat and to get rid of. And that's why I wanna point it out to you guys that while it's pretty much a non-issue when you are getting hydroquinone prescribed to you by a doctor, uh, you know, you're following up, it certainly can and does happen to patients who are using it without uh, medical supervision. I have seen it firsthand, patients who, who develop it from using 
uh, hydroquinone that they've been using for years and didn't realize that this was a possibility. Um, it's, it's not very common, but I have seen a handful of cases. If you go back in time on my channel, I have videos about hydroquinone, and I always emphasize in those videos that if you're using hydroquinone over the counter, you really should limit use to no more than three months at a time, even arguably shorter. And the reason to, to, to recommend that is as a safeguard, um, because the research shows that the longer you use it without medical supervision, you know, that's a risk factor for developing this rare but disfiguring side effect. So it's prudent to point that out for people and for people to understand that hydroquinone, while it's safe under medical supervision, it, it has potential for adverse effects. Skin lightening market is huge. There is a large demand. Nowadays, we have direct to consumer entities that distribute prescription strength hydroquinone to people. But you do have to wonder what the long-term ramifications of that might be on the overall landscape of the development of exogenous ochronosis. Um, it's something that we need to keep talking about because it's rare under medical supervision, but we all know that people are using hydroquinone without doctor supervision. So you need to realize that this is a real risk, especially if you have a deeper skin tone. It, it becomes a real risk in those scen scenarios where you're using it without medical supervision. Talking about exogenous ochronosis is not meant to fear monger hydroquinone. I, I think hydroquinone is a great option for a variety of conditions of hyperpigmentation, but it's important to, to know about that risk because nowadays, like I pointed out, you're still gonna have a lot of access to prescription strength hydroquinone through various entities, right, online, um, and in a lot of countries, you can still buy hydroquinone over, over the counter. Um, it's important for people to realize that this is a risk they may run into if they use it themselves for a prolonged period of time without taking a break. Uh, regular medical follow-up is really important for patients who are using topical hydroquinone, in, in my opinion, uh, because especially if you have a deeper skin tone, every three months, uh, you know, I think, I think re-evaluation is, is really important because of these uh, adverse events that might develop and for making plans moving forward as to the tapering regimen, if and when that needs to be started to minimize the risks, at least in the case of melasma, of rebound uh, melasma, or you know, unfortunately, it, it can happen where you get rebound worsening of, of hyperpigmentation. Medical supervision is also important with hydroquinone because it can be pretty irritating, and the irritation can be subtle, and that irritation can make the melanocytes, the pigment cells, kind of go wild, make make a lot more. You get worsening pigmentation, so it definitely can happen. People will go to great lengths for skin lightening globally. It's a, it's a global high demand issue, hyperpigmentation, uh, all over the world. Uh, there's a, you know, it's a huge market, skin lightening. And it, it, has, it has a dark side for sure. As a reminder, I have a recent video talking all about um, mercury, high mercury contamination and a lot of these uh, skin bleaching creams that you can, you can purchase uh, that have serious serious health consequences to them. So there's definitely, there's definitely a really dark side to the topical skin lightening market, but it's also important to remember that these are medical conditions. They affect people's overall well-being, and hydroquinone is a medical treatment, and it's got a, you know, a ton of research to support its efficacy, and it can be safely used to treat disorders of hyperpigmentation under medical supervision. But I don't think we should be too cavalier in saying, oh, it's fine to use hydroquinone without taking a break from it because people DIY their own treatments. We know that. You know, I can tell you until the cows come home to see a board certified dermatologist for hyperpigmentation, conditions around pigmentation. But we know that people may have limited access to that and they're going to try to Im improve things themselves. Hydroquinone, they hear is the gold standard. They can get access to it. So if, you know, as much education as I can put forward so that you guys are cognizant of, of the risks that can occur when using it without medical supervision. If you go see a board certified dermatologist, you have a conversation with them about your goals, what it is that's bothering you as it relates to hyperpigmentation, and you, you come up with a plan together that includes using hydroquinone topically, and they are following you, you know, don't feel as though there's some magic that happens within three months that means that you have to stop because under their supervision, they may find it, it's appropriate to continue you on that treatment. 
It's a whole different story though when we're talking about people who have access to hydroquinone either through these direct to consumer services or as I said can be still purchased over the counter in a lot of countries. It's a whole different conversation in that case uh, because you really do have to understand that you can put yourself on a path of risk for exogenous ochronosis. And um, also the other really important thing with hydroquinone, if I didn't already mention it, I always mention it, I'm surprised I haven't at, at this point, is you've got to be protecting yourself from the sun because hydroquinone actually um, can uh, increase your sensitivity to the sun. I'm a huge fan of hydroquinone under medical supervision, but I do get nervous when people start using hydroquinone without medical supervision because then the risk of exogenous ochronosis becomes more, more of a possibility. And I've seen cases firsthand. I don't want to scare you away from hydroquinone, but I don't want you to, to misuse it if you have access to it. And I don't want this to happen to anyone. All right, y'all, that's what I can tell you about the safety of hydroquinone. On the end slate, I'm going to put my recent review of the new Ambifade cream. So make sure you check that one out um, because if you have hyperpigmentation, chances are you have heard of Ambifade cream. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.